This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. A car crashes in the capital, and inside it, police find a mountain of drugs. Debt traps are causing untold misery to the poor, as they can find no way out. And the worst ever getaway in the history of crime from two criminals who are quite frankly clueless. But first, our headline story. A car has crashed in the capital this week, and the driver stepped out of the vehicle. He looked around him, and then he fled, abandoning the vehicle with no intention of ever returning. But why did he flee? Well, the reason became very apparent when the police opened the car door and they looked inside. And what they found was an Aladdin's cave of drugs. Over 100 packages of methamphetamine were discovered. And by my calculations, that haul could be over 100 kilos in weight. That's over $10 million in value. And that's not all, as last week another Chinese woman was caught with a staggering 120 kilos of drugs. The river of drugs in Cambodia of late has become a full-on torrent. But the question is, where does it all come from? Police made a surprising discovery when they went to tow away a crashed vehicle this week. And to their utter amazement, they discovered over 100 packages of the illegal narcotic ice, also known as crystal meth. The car was bearing Lao number plates, and the driver had unsurprisingly fled the scene. But what I got to thinking when writing this story is how is it? that tons of drugs seem to be flooding the streets. Well, the BBC recently noted that a UN report has said that criminal gangs are moving more drugs by sea to evade land patrols, making them harder to spot, and their aim could well be the ports of Cambodia to ship on the deadly cargo to their main markets, which lay in Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. But what this does not answer is where do all these drugs come from? Well, mostly they come from the super labs in Myanmar, labs that can run a day and night, producing vast tons of drugs in plain sight of corrupt law enforcement of Myanmar. Shan State in Myanmar itself is home to what many believe is the world's largest meth trade. Traffickers ship the drugs through the borders of Laos, Cambodia and Thailand, an area known as the Golden Triangle. And this is just one single example as to the scale of all this. Thai authorities seized more than 900 kilos of crystal meth from one single trawler in the Gulf of Thailand earlier this year. So this 100 kilo bust in Phnom Penh now does not look so large, as the factories in Myanmar keep pushing out ton after ton of these drugs, and there is no end to how much they can produce, and also no end to the misery that this causes. Here is a word you're going to hear an awful lot of. Come the next recession. And that word is debt. Many believe financial turmoil is just over the brow of the hill, judging by the dark clouds of rising interest rates. And debt is going to be a major issue. The problem it seems in Cambodia is that debt is everywhere, as the concept of saving up to purchase an item does not fit into the must-have-now culture. So almost everyone takes out a loan, and oh so often nobody reads the contract, not realising that the repayment is not in fact repaying the loan, but only paying the interest itself. And therefore, the loan is never decreasing. 
And the world of loans is infested with predatory lenders offering incredibly bad deals. And as always, it is the poor that suffer the most. The National General Commission has noticed an alarming increase in the number of people reporting cases of debt brought on by misleading advertising, unsolicited calls and leaflets posted on vehicles, doors, fences, anywhere that they can put them. And also, adverts online that advertise deals that seem too good to be true. And they are, as many of these loans are from unregistered companies and unlicensed brokers, with many of these predatory lenders advertising repayments that only quote the interest, not actually paying back the loan. So people end up with a debt that has no end. Illegal lenders take ID cards and family books, and oh so often it is these vital documents that are held by the illegal loan companies. And with that, the trap is sprung and you are in debt prison. Now you must have an awful lot of compassion here, for it is so very, very hard to fully comprehend how crippling debt is. It literally affects every single decision you make. Can you afford to eat? What education can you afford for your child? And what health care can you give? to a loved one who is sick. It is a burden that is carried by so many who are poor and do not have full access to the banking system as you and I have. And they are forced into a well-laid trap of these predatory lenders. It has destroyed many families. Many have turned to drink and drugs to try and seek relief from its vice-like grip. And tragically, many have committed suicide, unable to see any future away from their debts. It is quite simply a modern plague, and it will only get worse. This week on Crime Desk, an update on that inferno that took so many lives. And also, we have two of the world's most stupidest criminals. Firstly, a quick update on a story from last week about the nightclub fire that killed eight people. Four men have now been arrested in connection with the deadly nightclub Inferno. The four men are workmen who were working on the building at the time of the fire. Under interrogation, one suspect stated that three of the men were working on the ground floor, but one was working on the fifth floor ceiling. Where? the fire started. He stated that they had seen smoke coming from the top of the ceiling and they had tried to put out the fire, but had been unsuccessful. So they called the fire service. It is now believed it was their bad wiring work that started the fire, a fire that raged out of control and went on to claim so many victims. The police are looking at bringing charges against all four men for those deaths. Two Chinese men have attacked a cab driver and then they stole his car as he was refueling it on the Phnom Penh Sheer Nookville Expressway. The driver was transporting the two passengers to Sheer Nookville, but when the car stopped to refuel, the two men suddenly attacked the driver, stabbing him with a knife, which to me seems beyond idiotic, as the driver could easily ID the perpetrators due to three very strong reasons. One, he knew exactly what they looked like and what they were wearing. Two, they told him to take them to Sheer Nookville. And three, They were on the expressway, which oddly only goes to Sheernookville. So a good guess is the hijackers may well flee in the direction of 
Have a guess. That's right, sheer Nookville. So no surprise in the next sentence when I inform you the place of arrest. The police stop the car and the two Chinese suspects at a checkpoint just outside. That's right, Shia Nookville. Some people just should not get out of the house, I think. But there is another interesting aspect to this story. These men are obviously not the leading lights in criminal intelligence. But even these two both had multiple passports, including Chinese passports, Thai passports, and Taiwanese passports. And that means they could move anywhere on the planet without any trace. Except, of course, the expressway to Xianookville. I like this story, as I think it will be a huge benefit to all those looking to travel in the near future. Being able to travel with a lot less hassle and a lot less terminal transfers, and for me, the thought of nestling my well-proportioned posterior into an airline seat in Siem Rip and not having to rise again until I reach my destination of London or the USA brings me a rush of joy. For gone will be the days of hours of layovers in a secondary airport and the agony of trying to catch connecting flights. For the dream of a direct flight out of the north of Cambodia is almost here, as Siem Rip International Airport is now 98% complete, and with it, a whole new chapter of international aviation has arrived. Siem Rip's new international airport construction is almost complete, being quoted as over 98% finished. Construction of Siem Rip Angkor International Airport is scheduled to be launched this October, the Under Secretary of State and spokesman for the Civil Aviation Authority has said. He has also said that the employees of the old airport who wish to join the new one will find a job waiting for them and none will be laid off. The new airport is to be officially named as Siem Rip Angkor International Airport. The build cost was an absolute fortune, as airports of this size never come cheap. An estimated 880 million was spent in 2019 alone, and that total rose to 1,100 million by 2022. Now, as to the price in 2023, well, that has not been calculated. But it would be no underestimation to say that this will top out at a cool one and a quarter billion dollars. Gosh! But here is the gripe that I keep on hearing from, you know, that guy down the pub who knows everything about everything. The airport is 40 kilometres from Siem Rip town. And, and it's just too far away. Well, I say to him and his type, you are buffoons. I mean, just think about it. Spend an hour drifting along the roads of Cambodia so you may get a direct flight. Or five hours in Frankfurt, waiting in a plastic chair designed by the Marquis de Sade. So stop moaning, you few. For this airport is an absolute blessing, and I, for one, greet it with a very hearty cheer. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. A quick look at the weather. We have the temperatures in the mid-30s. The humidity is a bit more manageable this week, from about 50% going up to about 60%. But what happens to you when you go out into the great outdoors is very much down to luck. You could go out for an hour and come back and look like a drowned rat, whereas the next hour you could get yourself a suntan. It's all depending as to how lucky you are.
This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini. And that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.